Hello and welcome. Today we're working if we have two dice and we roll them repeatedly, what is the probability we'll get a seven or less than six or so on? So let's get started. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial literacy and I build Excel problems. So let's get started. Here's what the spreadsheet looks like. Let me start from zero basically. So all I did was the possibility the first six dice rolls would be ones for die one and then one, two, three, four, five, six for die two. So those are distinct possibilities. So there's six possible. And we can do the same thing for twos and then threes. And so what we have is we have six times six. So six sided die times a six sided die. We have 36 possibilities. And so we'll have all the way from one and one all the way up to six and six. So one thing we want to do is add up the ones the one plus one, and we can do this and we can copy this all the way down. So then one plus two, so on. One plus two is three. The total of the two die would be a three and a four and a five and a six, so on. So let's go all the way down. I'm gonna double click, send it all the way down. So if you got a pair of sixes, then you have a 12 total. So what we can do is we can count how many twos there are, how many threes, how many fours. We're going to count the total items. Now we can do this uh, a couple of different ways. Let me show you the way that most people do it and I'm going to uh, show you an extra step because I think it's a little bit faster. So let's do, we're going to do a function called count ifs. So I'm, I'm clicking on the fx which is the function that brings up my formula builder. I'm going to search for count ifs, but it's the one I use most recently, so I'm just going to click on that. So here's two things that we need. I need a criteria range, and my criteria range is going to be that all those 36 possibilities, and then my criteria is going to be the two. How many times do we have a two? Well, now think about what we know. It's only possible if you have double ones, right? You roll doubles uh, that are ones that would be two, and then no other total would equal two. So that's just a count of one. Now to copy this down, we would need to take the criteria and uh, make it absolute, which is function F4. And so then you can copy that down, so on. So we, what we'll see is, and I already have the graph built, what we can see is the most likely is the most common is a seven. So there's all sorts of combinations of seven. You can roll a three and a four, a four and a three, a one and a six, a six and a one, and so on. So that is the count of all the possibilities. Now, I'm gonna show you a quicker way. Um, I think this is one step back, but I think it saves us some time here. Let's change this to, um, let's name this range. And let's call this range, I'm going to highlight that entire range, those 36 possibilities. I'm going to call this uh, dice roll. You can call it whatever you want to. So in the left uh, by the formula bar, I'm going to call it dice roll. And so then here, what I can do is I can edit my formula. And instead of having this kind of dollar sign D, dollar sign 2, all this, I can just call it dice roll, whatever I called it. And you see it brings up that array. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'll copy it all the way down. So now, well, let's see here. Let's do this. Now what I have is the formula is a little bit easier to read, and dice roll is already absolute. So I think that's one way uh, to improve your skills in Excel, if you're working on Excel. Then name that range, and it's going to be understand, you can understand how this works later on. When you open this up in six months, you can see, oh, I can see easily what happened. So let's do a percent. Um, let's add up the total here. The total, we can do a sum. Here, I just used a keyboard shortcut, but that would be, the sum would be equals sum, start your parentheses, and we just need the total of all these possibilities. We know that's gonna be 36, because six times six, six-sided die times a six-sided die, gives us 36 different possibilities. Now we want to build a percentage. We'll take one divided by the total. So that's going to be, and I'm going to make the uh, 36 absolute. So that's going to be something like 
2.78%. And all these percentages, 6 out of 36 is 16.67%. Uh, so let's add up the total here. The total is going to be 100%. And we can build this as a fraction. So the way I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel, um, you can easily do it by hand. You know this is 1 out of 36. But let me show you how we can get Excel to build that for us. Now to do the fraction, you know it's going to be 1 out of 36 and then 2 out of 36. Let me show you how you can do this in Excel. There's, this is a text string. I'm going to point to the 1. And then, uh, since it's a text screen, I can put things together using the ampersand. So ampersand, I need a double quote and then a slash and a double quote because I'm going to put the slash in between the 1 and the 36. And then I need to point to the 36. I need to put an ampersand here and point to the 36. I need to make that absolute. So it now I have 1 divided by 36 would be our fraction. And we can go all the way down and we can see, well, if you what's the likelihood or what's the probability you could get a 7? Well, there's six different options, ways to get a 7. So that is 6 out of 36 or it, the fraction reduces down to 1 sixth or 16 and 2 thirds percent. So all this means the same thing. This helps you to understand how this works. So here's what I did. I built a, a little chart. So let me show you how this chart works. All I did was I can highlight using the, the labels and using the total and the count. So if we can go here to the analyze data on my, I'm on my home ribbon. And one of the options will give me, and I just use this. So it says count by total, and we can insert the chart. And you see that chart is the basic chart here, and then I just edited a little bit. So that's how you kind of do the chart. You're welcome to edit that. So let's do, now one thing we did, remember we named this dice roll. Okay, so we have a, a name here called dice roll. That's all the options. So let's do the, the mean. Let's calculate the mean of, of the dice rolls. So here that's called average, and we can just type in dice roll. And you see how it shows that? It's, a, it's now a named range. And I'm going to close parentheses. So the average of dice roll is 7. We can take this. We could add up all the numbers here. We can add up all the numbers and figure out um, what is the mean. So the average is 7. The count is 36. The min is 2. The max is 12. And the sum, if you wanted the sum, is 252. So let's do other ones. Let's do standard deviation. So um, standard deviation. Now I'm going to use standard deviation of the sample size because I'm going to use it. I uh, have it used later on. Um, so standard deviation and it's dice roll. And I have the dice roll selected so I can just hit tab, close my parentheses, and the standard deviation is going to be 2.4. The max, the very largest number is max and it's called dice roll. The min, what's the smallest number here? Well, we know it's going to be, and I need to do this, dice roll. We know it's going to be 2 because we've already seen that. And the median, and dice roll. So what we see is the absolute median, the middle number is 7, but the mean is seven. Now let's answer a few questions based on this. So sometimes you might have a problem in class or you're, you're just trying to think about what's the probability. So let's do this. We can say, what is the probability that the sum equals seven? Well, we can look here. We can look at this chart because we've summarized it. We can go back and look and count all the times there's seven, but we've already counted, right? We use the county of function. So, it looks like it's going to be 6 out of 36. So it's going to be 16.67. Or we could say we, it is 6 and over 3, 36. 6, 36 is the fraction 
you can reduce that down to one-sixth. Well, what is the probability of a sum greater than seven? Probability of a sum greater than seven. Well, what we could do is we say, okay, here's the probability of seven, but what would work would be an eight, a nine, 10, 11, 12. And so it could be an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the sum of all those probabilities is gonna be the probability of anything greater than seven. So I'm gonna add this up, do sum, and the eight, the nine, 10, 11, those numbers are 41.67. Now, how do we add this up? This is gonna be 15 so our fraction would be something like 15 divided by 36 could you reduce that yes you could what is the probability of a sum less than 6 well so let's do the sum of less than 6 so the sum of 5 4 3 2 1 I'm sorry not 1 but um, 2 5 4 3 and 2 so that's the sum of those probabilities and those sum of those probabilities less than six would add up to equal, looks like 10 out of 36. So this is 10, 36. So that's how you solve those answers uh, from probability with two dice rolls. Now let's think about it a different way. Um, you could think about this as a probability matrix. And so what you could do is you could say, well, if the first die is one and the second die is one, you've got a two, and then one plus two is three, one plus three is four, uh, you could do two plus two is four, so on. Six plus one is seven. So this is all the possible uh, options, and this is a table, six by six, that's 36 different possibilities. So we're gonna ask the same questions, we'll get the same answers. So what is the probability the sum equals seven? Well, you can highlight this and count the sevens. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the number of sevens. Now, one thing you can do is, if you care about this, let me show you one more Excel function. You can go to conditional formatting. You can highlight uh, just the um, inside, not the uh, labels on the left or the uh, top. So let's go to conditional format. We can highlight a cell that contains equal to, and here we want it to be equal to a seven. So we're gonna highlight anything that equals to a seven, and there it's easy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and um, uh, not seven, but six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six out of 36. So that's how you do if the probability of the sum equals seven. That's one way to do it. You can visualize it a little bit easier maybe than the first one. What if it's the probability of sum greater than seven? Well, let me highlight all this. We would count the eights, the nines, the tens, so on. So let me do another conditional formatting. So if it is greater than, uh, if the cells are greater than a seven, let's count those and it'll highlight those. All we have to do then is count, and that's gonna be 15 over 36. We do one more um, probability matrix. What if it's less than six? Well, here we can just highlight everything. I'll do a conditional format and anything less than, less than a six. So five, four, three, two would count. So now we have to just count those and that's gonna be 10 out of 36. So let's do one more thing that's not really built uh, into our problem, but let's just say we, we um, rolled one time. If we rolled one time, well, there's equal probability of getting a, a, um, a one through six and a one through six. But what we have is we have distinct probabilities of getting a two through 12. Even though one die is independent, it's equally one six for each option. Well, the sum is gonna be a little bit different. So if we just roll one, well, our mean, we rolled a 10. And our mean is 10, our max is 10, our min is 10, so it's not very interesting. And this is what we expect our distribution to be. But in fact, with one, it was just 100, we rolled a 10. So um, I've built this on random numbers, so I need to hit F9 to recalculate. So let's do F9 to recalculate. And now this one, it rolled an eight. 
Well, it rolled a 5 on the second one. On the next one, it rolled a 7. Now, the way that it works is we can't predict any one result. Just because 7 is the most common, it doesn't mean that it has to be a 7. Remember, we could roll again, and it would be a 5. So what, we, what I've done is I've, I've run one sample, I've run 10 samples. Now it, it just uh, rolled 10 samples. And you see, this is not, um, we can't really predict many things when we have only 10 samples. If we do 100, then it gets to be more interesting. It gets to be a little bit more predictable. If we run 1,000 samples, now it gets to be uh, where it is very similar to what we've predicted. Um, within a percent or two, do you see we have we have not as many 11s as we thought, right? We have more 5s than we thought. But let's run 10,000. If we run 10,000, then it gets very close, very, very close to what our options are that we predicted at the very beginning. I hope this is helpful. You can do a lot of things in Excel. Understanding probability is one of those things that's very helpful for you. And so thanks for watching. See you on the next video.